Hello, in this video we're looking at how to keep toxic people out of your life. This comes from a message or a question that was sent in on my YouTube comments and the person said I'd be curious to hear a video on how you manage to keep similar toxic controlling nasty types of people out of your life now. It can't have been easy to avoid something you've been so programmed to accept all of your life. Yes, indeed. So it was a bit of a process um, being the family scapegoat. Obviously, there was a lot of conditioning and I took on a lot of limiting beliefs such as I'm bad, I'm wrong, I'm to blame, I'm unworthy and I don't deserve. So with those limiting beliefs, definitely they show up and manifest in my life the evidence of those limiting beliefs were manifesting in my life. And yes, I was definitely attracting other people into my life with the same type of energetic vibration as my family of origin, which wasn't a good thing. So how to keep toxic people out of our life? It's um, the limiting beliefs that we have is a big piece and then the second part of it is the inner child work um, so these are the two key pieces so if we can identify the limiting beliefs that we're holding um, then that will be a very good starting point so how do we do that we work with the trigger that is here at the moment so whatever is triggering us is a very good place to start because it means that the emotion and the energy of that is right up at the surface and of course we need to have the right tools on board or to have somebody really helpful to help us work through those triggers and hopefully you have um, something like that in your life Generally, the way triggers work when we've been in the role of the family scapegoat is whatever is unprocessed trauma within us uh, gets replicated in our current day life. So it could be somebody at work that triggers you and it's about identifying what are the key emotions. Is it fear? Is it anger? Is it grief? or what, what is coming up? Do you feel powerless and helpless? So generally a trigger is going to be an emotional flashback. So it doesn't have its origins in that moment with that person, but it has its origins with the original wounding and the complex childhood trauma. So it's understanding that piece. And as a child in the treacherous environment that we grew up in, we most likely will have taken on beliefs. So if we take the example of like the work situation and something really stressful or a person there who is very triggering, what we can then, if you try and work it down backwards and try and identify that limiting belief, that you have, which would be something along the lines of, I don't, I don't have any power. <clears throat> so like I'm powerless or uh, feeling vulnerable that like I don't matter or I'm not good enough could be another one. So if you get very clear about this specific limiting belief, that's a very good starting point. If we don't have any tools to heal from limiting beliefs, this can be tricky because if we're not excavating the limiting beliefs and releasing them from our system, we're always going to find evidence of the limiting beliefs, such as I'm not good enough, I'm all alone and I don't deserve. So it's very important that we work on the limiting beliefs. One way you can do this is to journal from that place. Uh, say for example, if it's I'm not good enough, um, you can journal from the part of you that carries that belief. Um, another piece of the work that we do is we work somatically. We incorporate the wisdom of the body. 
and we find where in or around the body that that belief lives. So you may be able to access that or you may not be able to access that. It may just be numb, uh, which is uh, valid and perfectly fine because uh, part of our survival strategy is to numb out the feeling because the feeling was too overwhelming. So that could be another starting point for you. Um, definitely journaling helps get more clarity and just get it out on paper or a laptop um, and we can get more information the more we journal. Um, the more we journal the more we get access to the inner child which is the second piece for how to keep toxic people from your life. So the first toxic people that we had as the scapegoat child were the family members, were the elders. So we kind of have that imprint, imprint of that's our relationship template. This is how humans treat me. This is what I can expect from other humans. And it's difficult for the brain to understand that there could be another way to live in the world and that people would interact with us with respect, that kind of feels like an alien concept um, lots of the time for us. So after we've been journaling from the limiting belief, the specific one that we've identified for quite a while, we will get access into the origins of that belief, such as if it's a belief that I don't deserve you might get memories of, you know, siblings, maybe you had a golden child sibling, they deserved, they got the attention, they got the praise and the validation, the acknowledgement from the parents and you were equally as skilled and intelligent, but you were shamed for that from the parents. Um, so that's the sort of stuff that can start to come up when we work with the limiting beliefs. Uh, it's very painful and it's very uncomfortable to do that. So you may need to work with a professional with that. Um, and then we're in the area of the inner child. So then it's about getting the skills on board to know how to connect with the inner child and how to build trust with that relationship uh, because without the relationship with the inner child it's difficult to release the childhood trauma from your system. So this is a key piece of our recovery work is working with the inner child, <clears throat> building trust with them and then what we need to do is to hear their story, the pain that they're carrying. We need to validate that, we need to acknowledge it we need to witness it and we need to bring <clears throat> compassion to it. The thing about working with the inner child is that there's no other human on the planet that can help that inner child. That inner child can be frozen in time. They can be living back in 1976 or 1996 just on a loop so that they're experiencing the same feelings, they're carrying the same fears, they're seeing the world through the eyes of the age that you were back in those years. And they don't know how to get out of that. So what we need to do is to go in to that part of our psychology and make contact with that inner child um, they may be reticent about it or they may be fearful or they may turn around and come running to you with open arms uh, saying, yeah, like take me out of here. I want to come and be with you. This place isn't safe. So just um, it's understanding how to get those skills and tools on board to work with our own psychology because we have to be the sane, healthy adult to that little child. So all the complex childhood trauma resides with the inner child. So that's why we do the majority of our work is there. And then that inner child starts to feel a sense of safety. That inner child starts to believe, oh, I have 
a loving parent now. Uh, it's not 1986 anymore. It's not 1997 and I'm not still going to school and I'm not under the authority of these two crazy adults. So the inner child just needs to recalibrate and understand that it is 2022 and they're safe with you and they don't need to be exposed into the world today. They're not walking around the world as a little five-year-old because they're safe within you. So all of that just takes a bit of time to get on board. It's like learning a new language. It's going to be difficult in the first few weeks. It's going to sound very foreign, but we just need to get that on board. And it's a very potent, useful tool when we do know how to use it properly. So that really helps us uh, release limiting beliefs because that we don't need those beliefs anymore. We understand that they're not helpful in our current life, um, not something we can do with our cognitive rational brain uh, because we can say, oh yes, you know, the belief of I don't deserve or I only deserve to be treated like a trash can. I know that's not helpful to me, uh, so I'm just going to let that go. Um, it doesn't work like that with complex childhood trauma. We have to access the part of the brain where the trauma originated from, which isn't the rational, logical part of the brain. So it's a bit of a process there to access the subconscious, uh, but with the right tools and help and support, we can do that. And then imagine what your life would be like without those limiting beliefs. So if you were able to release the belief that I don't deserve, what would your life look like? You'd attract things in your life that you you did deserve that previously you were blocked to energetically uh, because they can come in because your beliefs are very powerful. And other beliefs such as I'm all alone that's a belief that the inner child carries and for a child it's absolutely devastating to be alone but when we heal that inner child they're not alone anymore because they're with us our adult self we're taking care of the inner child and it's not correct to say i'm all alone because we can never be as alone as we were as a child abandoned emotionally by the dysfunctional family system. So that in a nutshell is the process that we do to have no toxic people in our life and to understand, see the red flags if somebody is acting in toxic ways and that we're going to have good healthy boundaries around that. So when we do the various different work um, to heal from scapegoat child abuse. The result of that is more safety in our system. When we have more safety in our system, we're much better equipped to spot red flags and to know what boundaries to put in place to keep ourselves safe from any toxic people who are manipulative or cruel or nasty. Um, and lastly, what I can say about this is that we learn to treat ourselves in the same way that our parents treated us. And what we need to do in our recovery is do an upgrade on that um, and learn how to treat ourselves in ways that are respectful and much healthier and loving and caring than what happened in the dysfunctional family. So all those pieces contribute to having very good boundaries and being grounded in who we are, that we deserve to be treated with respect and that we feel confident, confident enough to have the skills to deal with any situations where that is not the case. I hope that's been helpful for you today. Thank you for tuning in and see you the next time.